In many ways, a command-sponsored tour in Qatar is different than a command-sponsored tour anywhere else. For example, the work environment is less normalized due to support for ongoing contingency operations. Six-day work weeks are the norm for most deployers, although command-sponsored members can expect two days off each week when the operations tempo allows it. We get our share of quality time. Um, again, getting a two-day weekend every weekend uh, is helpful. So, um, you know, we check out of work. I take my weekends on Friday, Saturday, because that coincides with the weekend for the daycare. So the kids are home uh, Fridays and Saturdays. So we get to two whole days to hang out as a family. I'd have to say, at this point, it hasn't been that different to work schedules in the US. They've met, they have managed it really well. So, you know, unless obviously there are exercises going on or other things and TDYs and all that normal stuff that would happen anywhere, he comes home and we get to hang out. There is no child development center or other on-base options for childcare, like you would find at other overseas bases. However, there are off-base daycare centers and mother and baby groups in Doha who are a good resource for childcare. Before the family arrived, I basically just um, went to one of the uh, websites, Doha Mums is a, a good resource. Very good resource. Uh, Dohamums.com, I think. Mm -hmm. Find it on Google, I'm sure. Yes. But they had a great summary of all the different nurseries and daycares in town. The place we found is, is good. The kids uh, seem to enjoy it. And the, the amount of things that they learn there are just incredible compared to U.S. standards. Our three-year-old gets Arabic, French, and Spanish classes as part of his daycare every day. So um, it's, it's actually pretty impressive. Um, our friend is our babysitter. She is another um, spouse here, and she has two teenage daughters. So between her and her daughters, they babysit for us. Um, we, before she lived here, uh, we had another family that has a four-year-old and they used to babysit for us. There are um, children in here that are expats that have taken the babysitting course. I'm not sure if it's the European one or the Qatari one. Um, and there are also maids that babysit um, to get a little bit of extra money. So it's very easy to find a babysitter, but to find somebody that you're comfortable with is will take a little bit. We also do not have a commissary. However, there are a variety of grocers in the local economy. The challenge is because, uh, as I said previously, everything's imported. Sometimes you can get it and sometimes you can't. So you have to be very flexible if you're trying to cook something, learn how to substitute, um, or just know where all the different stores are in town because if they don't have it in one, they might have it in another. I, I do my shopping at two different grocery stores, the majority of it, but then there's one thing that I can't get at either of those, so I have to make a special trip. Furthermore, Al Udeed is a Qatari base, not an American base. Therefore, the host nation controls entry. Military members gain access using their common access card. However, dependents require written permission from the Qatar government, which can be requested prior to arrival in country. Finally, dependents bound for Qatar must receive pre-departure training. In accordance with United States Central Command Operations Order 05-02, dated 16 June 2008, all DOD dependent family members, age 14 years and older, traveling to the CENTCOM AOR for accompanied PCS moves, must receive the following training prior to departure. Level 1 Anti-Terrorism Awareness Cultural Aspects of Host Country Medical Threat and Appropriate Force Health Protection Countermeasures Self-Aid and Buddy Care Training chemical, biological, radioactive, and nuclear personal protective measures and defense survival skills. Dependents age 13 and under may receive this training at the sponsor's discretion. Keep in mind that your servicing force support squadron will confirm that this training is complete before issuing dependent travel orders. The decision to apply for command sponsorship is an important one. Living in Qatar as a family is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I think the best part of living in Qatar is being able to experience the different cultures and the different foods and uh, just being able to, to um, see the different sites that they have here. Um, it's beautiful. They have beautiful architecture, um, living near the ocean, um, going to the beach. It is a lot of fun. Uh, be open to the culture. Um, if you are, then this program is for you, and 
The HNCC has a very thorough checklist. Um, get all your items for your residency permit done before you come. Uh, the sooner you do that, then the sooner you can get your residency permit and enjoy your time here in Qatar. Pretty much anything that you expect to see in a big city in the States, you will find here. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about Doha is it's so safe and so, so calm that you don't have to worry about large crowds and securing your belongings, pickpocketing. Um, and everything's family friendly um, because they're a very conservative culture. Everything is family friendly so you don't have to worry about there being alcohol or drunk people or cursing or inappropriate behavior. You can take your kid anywhere at any time of the day. And in fact, the Qataris take their children anywhere. Some of the challenging aspects to living here is, is that getting established into this country, especially during the summer, which right now, coincidentally, and into the next few years, Ramadan is going on. It makes the in-processing, at least those issues that you have to do with the Qataris, to be um, very limited in their service and scope. Uh, and not very prompt, uh, simply because during Ramadan, the government offices slow down. They don't shut down, but they slow down, so things take a long time to process. And additionally, during the summer months, many people actually leave the country. So therefore, a family that's considering coming over here uh, might be best served to withhold judgment on what they think of the place, maybe until the October time frame. Uh, so if a family comes over here in July uh, or June or even August, you know, they might find for the first month or two or maybe even three that they're frustrated that things aren't happening fast enough for them. Uh, I would almost extend an assurance that things will improve, certainly by October, certainly no later than November, but getting through those first couple of months can be a challenge. It's a new experience. We've got to do a lot of stuff that we wouldn't do at a normal base, and it is, I think it's rewarding. You can live anywhere after you live here. Yes. For sure. I really like it here. Uh, I really, really do. But I think you have to have an open mind. You have to be willing to let a lot of little things slide. If you like doing things outdoors and you like exploring, great. There are so many places to travel to. If you like traveling, it's a great place to come, different part of the world. If you don't like any of those things and you prefer the comforts of the, you know, shopping at Target and having everything sort of all there, then it might not be the right place. If you apply and are accepted, you will be contacted by a military sponsor from your unit and a family advisor from one of the current families living in Qatar. They will help answer any questions that arise as you prepare for this assignment and assist with transition actions on this end. Additionally, the 379th AEW's portal page has a wealth of information about the Command Sponsorship Program. Here you will find transition checklists, local school information, our housing brochure, as well as the application for Command Sponsorship. If you have any questions pertaining to this program, please check out the Frequently Asked Questions list on our website or contact the Al Udeed Air Base Airmen and Family Readiness Center at 379-EFSS.AFRC at auab.afsent.af.mil or call us at DSN 318-437-6267 or 318-437-7080. We look forward to seeing you in Qatar.